the things we do in the practice. Learning to be generous, virtuous, developing concentration, even developing discernment. These are all tools, the means to an end. And one of the problems we have is that once we understand that they're tools, we tend not to take very good care of them. We think, it's just a tool, I'm using it for something else, and you keep looking down the road for what's going to come next. This is a cultural problem as much as anything else, because you go to traditional societies and people who work with tools take very good care of their tools. If you have a knife, you sharpen your knife and keep it sharp. If you have a bow and arrow, you keep them clean. In fact, if you look at the way people in ancient societies made their bows and arrows and all their other hunting tools, they put a lot of care into them, more than would be necessary just to make them functional. So we have to relearn some of those habits of really looking after our tools, like the practice of concentration we're doing right now. We know it's a tool. We know it's not an end in and of itself. But because it is a tool on our way to true happiness, you want to take good care of it. The Buddha talks about finding an object that the mind can settle down with, one that you find congenial. And you direct your thoughts to it, you evaluate it, it means you adjust it until it's just right, and then you settle in. In fact, he says you even indulge in the pleasure that comes from that concentration. In the case of the breath, this means working with the breath and developing a real interest in this breath energy in the body. It's something that in our culture we don't talk much about. You hear about chi or Brana, and it sounds pretty exotic. But essentially it's the energy flow that you feel in the body, and it's something that's very direct. In fact, it's your immediate experience of the body. It sounds exotic because our culture doesn't recognize it, but that doesn't mean that it's something that you can't immediately experience. In fact, it's useful to take the the Buddha's analysis of the body into four properties, earth, water, wind, and fire. And don't just dismiss them as being sort of medieval chemistry or medieval physics. They're ways of describing how you experience the body from within. And try to get to know the body in those terms, because it's a very useful vocabulary to have. Try to find a way of relating to the energy that feels good feels refreshing, feels nourishing. And don't be afraid of getting attached to the concentration. As a John Fung used to say, you have to be crazy about the meditation in order to do it well. Looking for every chance you have to get in touch with the breath, get, looking for every chance you have to get the mind to settle down. He says, whatever comes up in the course of the concentration, there's nothing that can't be fixed or can't be solved. You know, strange sensations in the body? Step back, look, and notice how you're breathing. Notice where you're putting too much pressure on the breath. Images that come into the mind. Just because there's an image in the mind and it's coming in a way that's very uncanny doesn't mean it's true. If you find it unsettling or disturbing, breathe deep down into the heart a couple times and it's going to go away. If you suddenly find yourself outside of the body, just think about those four properties again. Start with breath and go through fire, water, earth, 
fire is the warmth, water is the sense of cool sensations of the body, earth is the solidity, and you find yourself back in the body. And that's for whatever conceit may come up around the practice. Remember, there's healthy conceit and unhealthy conceit. And as long as you're warned ahead of time, you have the tools for undoing the unhealthy conceit. And the unhealthy one, of course, is one thinking that you've made yourself a better person than other people because you've got this concentration or you have this form of knowledge, whatever's come up. And the Buddha has you remind yourself that once you have that kind of thought, then the basis for the thought, the basis for your claim, has disappeared. In other words, if you think, I've got this great stage of concentration and I'm better than someone else over there, just that thought itself takes you out of the concentration. So you have to be careful about that. The issue is not so much whether you're better than someone else, it's how good you are at overcoming your own defilements, how good you are at figuring out where you're still causing stress or suffering and what you can do about it. Those are the questions, those are the issues you want to focus on. So whatever comes up in the course of the concentration, there's always a cure for it. And it's not that difficult. Especially if you stay with the breath. This is one of the reasons why John Lee focused on the breath in all his books, because it's the safest object of meditation you can find. It keeps you centered in the body, keeps you centered in the body with a sense of ease and well-being. And that ease and well-being are your, your measuring stick. If things start feeling really strange and weird, very uncomfortable, you step back for a bit and ask yourself, okay, where's the breath in here? How can I keep the breath? easy. Now, that some weird things may actually have to do with the sensations of, of rapture. Your body feels very large or very small, or your head may seem very large and your body small, or vice versa. You just keep reminding yourself in states like that, okay, how is the breath? If the breath feels okay, then these other sensations will, will pass pretty quickly. And you don't want to leave the breath to go into the rapture or leave the breath to go into whatever sense of ease comes up. The ease is there. You don't deny it. In fact, you actually try to make use of it, allow it to spread through the body. But it's your attention to the breath that keeps that ease going. So you don't want to lose touch with the breath. So indulge yourself with a sense of well-being that comes of breathing well. Ask yourself which part of the body seems to be starved of breath energy. Sometimes it's in the throat, sometimes it's in down in the intestines, maybe in your arms and legs. Even if you don't feel much in terms of the breath energy, hold that image in mind that the breath can go there. And simply holding that picture in mind will change the way the breath actually is able to flow. And as you get more and more sensitive, you realize, okay, there is breath energy there already. It's simply a matter of you're not labeling it properly. And you can settle in. And as the Buddha says, settle in, indulge. Don't be afraid of what they call the dangers of concentration. I mean, there are other things in life that are a lot more dangerous. When you don't have concentration, where are you going to look for happiness? You're going to look for happiness and sensual pleasures. And there's lots of danger there. All the unskillful things that people do around sensual pleasures, that's a lot more dangerous than the dangers of concentration. On the other end of the spectrum, a big danger is believing you've reached awakening when you haven't. So 
sometimes people mistake states of concentration or the ease that comes when the mind is feeling expansive as a foretaste of awakening. But the danger isn't there with the concentration. The danger is in with your, with your interpretation. And it's even worse when you've got a teacher who tells you, oh, this is stream entry or this is whatever. That's a lot more damaging than the dangers that come from concentration. The dangers of concentration are way overblown. But the real danger, as John Fung used to say, is that you don't really get into it. To realize that it's a tool, it's not an end in and of itself, but as any genuine craftsperson, you want to take really good care of it. Take good care of your breath. Take good care of the stillness of your mind. Learn to appreciate the sense of well-being that comes with a concentration. Don't be in a hurry to rush through it on your way to something you think might be better. Sometimes you hear people say that the, the path is the goal. Of course, the Buddha never said that, but he did say that you really want to work on developing the path, and it's in developing the path that you find the goal. So you don't look anywhere else. You look right here at the concentration. Because what you need to understand, the five aggregates, the processes of fabrication, they're all happening right here. It's just a matter of getting more sensitive to it right here. And how are you going to do that? It's by taking very good care of it. So if you look after your tools, your tools are going to look after you. <laughs>